Between the North Coast Mountains and the Bulkley Valley lies a glacier-fed river that is breathtaking in its beauty. But in recent years, it's also been the scene of ugly confrontation. Don't point your gun at me! A series of RCMP raids on protesters defying a court order. And with every raid, the temperature rose until things boiled over and led to this. But who would go so far and why? I know we would never ever tell anybody or support anybody to do any kind of damage. Hereditary Chief John Risdale wants to show us what the battle here is all about. The Wet'suwet'en call it Wet'senkwa. Wet'senkwa means blue, green, pure river. Couldn't be more clear from here. It's beautiful. But when he reaches the river's edge, he finds the water is far from clear. That seems awful dirty for this time of year. Just upstream, crews are tunneling under the riverbed to make way for a section of the coastal gas link pipeline. He's been trying to get up close. Security won't let him. I don't need to make arrangements with anybody. I'm Chief Namox, and this is what's holding territory. But Chief Namox is turned away because the worksite is also a crime scene. They emerge from the forest around midnight in February of last year, firing flare guns and swinging axes into the side of security trucks. An excavator on site was used to destroy other heavy machinery and mobile trailers. The estimated damage as high as $20 million. It was planned, it was practiced, and carried out in a very methodical manner. Chief Superintendent John Brewer is in charge of the Community Industry Response Group, or CURG, an RCMP unit formed to police resistance to the pipeline and other projects like it. Eight months after the worksite attack, the CURG was also targeted in a late night arson attack. Four RCMP vehicles and some others nearby destroyed. It wasn't always like this. For more than a decade, protests against the pipeline had been peaceful. But the last RCMP raid in the fall of 2021 marked a major turning point. For the first time in the conflict, the protesters were charged with criminal contempt of court. And at the same time, Coastal GasLink was finally able to ramp up operations here. That's when things turned violent down at the work site. That was more than a year ago. RCMP had 40 investigators on the case. A $100,000 reward had been posted. And the attackers are still out there. How close are you to making an arrest, so timeline-wise? I, I, I have been saying to my team, we are weeks away for the last few months, uh, certainly before the new year. Um, I believe we are that close. This is the first time he's revealing key details of the investigation into the worksite attack, saying police have identified more than half a dozen suspects and have been tracking their movements. Examining videos like this one, the protesters posted just weeks before the attack. A masked and camo wearing group pulling trees and tires across the road. Was it a rehearsal? They're the same impediments officers encountered trying to get up the only road to the worksite that night. So how did the attackers escape, if not down that road? Police say the group fled the worksite on snowmobiles, using the pipeline right of way, which runs parallel to the road. When they reached a protest camp, the attackers made their getaway in waiting trucks. While police were still busy assessing the threat at the worksite and securing the crime scene. Investigators later recovered DNA evidence there, the destruction also holding clues. Not everyone knows how to operate an excavator, and police know who among the protesters can. But after more than a year of investigating, the Mounties have concluded that it's not the local group that planned the attack. John Brewer believes it was orchestrated and largely executed by outside forces. Are you suggesting that the people who are involved, the suspects that you have in the worksite attack, came and infiltrated the group, that's the word you just used, and had some sort of attachment to the anarchist movement, such as it is in Canada? Yeah, I think, I think it's safe to say whether they are directly part of the anarchist movement or believe in it 
or use their tactics, absolutely. No one has claimed responsibility for the worksite attack, but an anonymous post on an anarchist website did take credit for the arson. The same website where credit was taken for damage to drilling equipment at a Calgary storage yard. The latest posting, a claim of sabotage, that before they were buried, some pipes had tiny holes drilled into them. Far from infiltrating the local protest group, anarchists were actually invited. Hi, I'm Rob. The chief took us yes. to meet Molly Wickham. Which do you prefer, oh, Molly or Slato? Uh, okay. The local protest leader who goes by Slato has called for anarchists to join the cause. We are calling on you, our allies, other indigenous nations, labor unions, anarchist groups. You called for people from oh, yeah. that movement to be a part of this movement. Oh yeah, we have a lot of uh, people that we've worked with in the past that are amazing, great human beings. But may have participated in that. So do you feel some responsibility for that then, if you called for them to come here? Absolutely not. Who do you think is responsible for that attack? I don't have an idea. Do you understand why I might find that hard to believe? <laughs> yes, okay. I do. Were because you a part we've of it? been here, absolutely not. And why wouldn't you have a sense of who would be behind that? They were clearly doing it in solidarity with. Yeah, the cause. I think I think that there's a lot of resistance to this project that is outside of ourselves. You know, I don't. So who are the outsiders? Police aren't saying who their suspects are, and we don't know. We did pull the court documents on every arrest made in the conflict zone, and the details are revealing. About 70% of the people taken into custody were not from this area. Some were from other parts in BC, others other provinces, and even the US. And more than one of them had ties to the anarchist movement. Our nation was hijacked. Our nation's name was hijacked. They've taken our name and put it in a bad spotlight all across Canada. Bonnie George works for Coastal Gas Link. She's also Wet'suwet'en and believes the violence has done lasting damage to her people, saying many protesters feel the same and have left the movement. The community members were just, just disgusted by what happened. We've got... Uh, 540 kilometers of pipe already in the ground on the project. So this is Coastal Gasling says the pipeline is now 85 percent complete, but police believe as long as work on the pipeline continues, the threat of violence here remains. The tunneling under the pure water of Wedzengkwa should be finished by June. Where the fight to protect the river goes then is far less clear. Rob Brown, CBC News near Houston, B.C.